Let's do it. I love you. You guys, first of all, welcome to Glitter and Garbage. I am so excited for today's guest. I've been waiting to have her on. It's the collab of the century in my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, she's so gorgeous. She's so funny. Uh, she's an incredible singer, unlike me, you guys. Uh, you may have seen her on American Idol. You know her from her podcast, So Funny It Hurts. It's Michaela Gordon. Hi, my Italian queen. Hi, my Can Italian queen. Can I get a name of the Father, Son, Holy yeah. Spirit for that intro, yes! baby? <laughs> yes. Beat me up, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Mother Mary. <laughs> um, it's so good to have you. I love you. Thank you so much for having me. I love you. You look gorgeous, you as are. always. No. Um, look, we didn't meet until, I can't remember, we started following each other, because obviously yeah. we were like... Oh, no, I've been a huge fan of yours for quite a long time. You. And I don't remember who it was that I got introduced by, but I've been following you for a couple of years. Oh, my God. I love you. Well, I love you so much. And when you asked me to do your podcast, I was like, oh, my God, of course, because we've been following each other. I think you're so hot. And I love hot, funny women. Thank you. And you just epitomize both of those things. So I'm so stoked. We have so much to talk about. First of all, we both got new tattoos. I know. Uh, yes. You guys know I've been talking about my Heart of the Ocean tattoo for a long time. I did finally get it. Look how cute it looks. I know. Well, I wanted to go the like hyper realistic route. Out, you and know? it does right everyone was like it looks like it's popping off of your arm yeah and that's what we wanted that's what we wanted it looks really good it's all healed too right it's well it's still a little dry so it's like we're almost a week out but it's healing oh, is that really what the nicely. lotions for are you still moisturizing i'm still moisturizing good and for you you're such a good tattoo patient oh my god i i am an I'm a gold star tattoo patient because here's the th- I'm OCD, so I'm like fucking bring it. Like it almost stresses me out. I'm like when I go to put the lotion on, it's like I'm scrubbing in for it surgery. Puts the lotion on the tattoo. <laughs> I do. Wait, what Good. did you get? What did you get? Well, I've been trying to finish this arm for fucking ever. So I got this cattle skull. It's like oh. a spiritual arm. Oh, I love that. I know, but also it kind of makes me look like a raging butch lesbian, like the Marlboro Man or something. I love that, though. Mm, Lesbians are unite. I I love that. I have this Johnny Depp Winona Ryder, the Winona Forever tattoo. I love that. So, and that's a little, like, it's a little more of a butch tattoo. It's like a biker tattoo. No, we're clearly giving butch energy. We are. Okay? And I love it. Watch out, butches. Okay? Because we're here now. We're here. I mean. So, pack up your flannels. Yeah, exactly. Like, this new generation's in. It is. I feel like, also, I feel like Italians. There's just a little butch energy in really, Italian. Listen to me. My fiance, who I am so in love with. Yeah, she's so said, hot, too. We lo- oh, she's so beautiful. She's so gorgeous. Bitch. I know. Like, she's fucking. And with that haircut, like, get out of here. Listen to me. I did a small, like, bowl cut uh-huh. a couple years ago, and I was so fucking ugly. She shaved <laughs> her head off, and I was like, that's enough. <laughs> you look so beautiful. She does. But she said one time I was drunk, and I go, <laughs> I don't even know why I would tell this No, tell it. I got mad at her and I got out of the car. I said, that's it. I'm leaving. (laughs) I got out of the car and I had this dress on, but I had heels on. And she said, Michaela, you should have seen the way you were walking. You were like Mighty Mouse, but like the butch version. You were like, oh, oh, my God. uh, uh, uh," And your heels and dress. I love it so much. And I was like, that's very, it's it's Italian. It is. It's It's an Italian Italian woman. It's Italian. Because we're all kind of tiny. We're small. We're we're not the tallest people. But we've got a lot of spirit. Yeah. (laughs) And we're sturdy. (laughs) We are sturdy. We might even be little, but we're like. We're, yeah. Knocking shit yeah, over. We've got strong arms yeah, to like true. stir a sauce, you know? <laughs> Good, these, these guns are Get ready. These guns are yeah, stirring. Exactly. <laughs> For a bolognese, you know? <laughs> and you were so sweet. You brought me meatballs when I did your podcast did your boyfriend like him he loved them okay good he was obsessed he says thank you so much of course i wanted to get you something that felt very la because you used to live here you live in vegas now yeah so i thought what better than sage with a little crystal listen and i this is the best yes i, the I string came apart a little bit so no i need good sage so bad i'm sick of everybody yeah good. and i love this good thank you and a blow pop because we, we blow people to get ahead of here, so. Yeah, we do. The, I, this is the <laughs> most blow job I've given in like 20 years, so. <laughs> Soak it in. <laughs> I it's love been a long you. time. I love you. Well, you know that was I said on my podcast, and as all the glitterati knows, that's my move. Uh, no, and I loved it, and so did my listeners. Oh, God. also by the way, my listeners 
love you. Oh my God, God, they I'm so happy. You. I got so many DMs oh, and I was good, like, she's good, not good. single, so shut the fuck up. I Those clips were so funny too. Yeah, because you're funny. No, you're funny and you put together a great clip and I love you and we're great together. I we mean, if afraid. we lived in the same city, like the city would explode. No, maybe. it's better for these people that I'm taking over Vegas. Yeah. You've got LA. Yeah. We meet in the middle. We meet in the middle. Prim. Exactly. Exactly. Now let's get to it. There have been a lot of bombshells dropping this week. Okay. Britney's memoir is coming out next week. Now, are you a Britney fan? Are you a big Britney girl? Because you're a singer. Let me talk a little bit. You were on American Idol when you were pretty young. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how old? 16. Yeah. So that's teeny tiny. And you were on. And how was that experience for you? I mean, it, it was amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy that I did it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, I moved to L.A. right after. Okay. So uh, it was great. It totally kickstarted any career that I wanted. I worked with Fran Drescher. I wanted to get right the into queen. comedy and yeah. I got to. Um, but 16 was also a very difficult age. I can't imagine mm -hmm. being Britney Spears at 16 years old. Right. It's a lot. Well, that's what I wanted. To, that's why I thought it was so perfect that you were coming on with all this Britney stuff happening. And we talk a lot about Britney on this uh, po uh, podcast because I love Britney. Um, but love. yeah, she's coming out with this memoir and we've all known what's she going to say about Justin, you know, because there's definitely a lot of stuff that we don't know that happened. And this week, you know, I was thinking we were going to have to wait till next week. This week, it's like I had an abortion because he didn't want the kid. He cheated on me because there's a long standing rumor. You know, the, the thought was that she cheated on him with Wade Robson, the right. choreographer. But didn't he confirm that? And then he did. And he kind of like was never around again. Yes. So basically, she never confirmed or denied. They both dropped breakup anthems he dropped um what was it was it crimea river i think it was crimea yeah, river. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. she dropped every time around the same time which people now are saying there's a scene in every time where there's a woman who gives birth to a baby and everyone's like oh is that a reference to the abortion kind of like we're all kind of looking back and seeing all these um, connections that we maybe didn't see before. But the biggest thing, because a friend of mine hit me up yesterday, you guys know RJ, and was like, oh my God, the abortion. And I, to be honest, it's like they were they were young. I it, That doesn't surprise me at no. all. Obviously, I hope she didn't have to, like feel like she had to do anything that she didn't want to do um but yeah that that didn't really shock me that much what i was really hoping would be revealed was that he cheated on her first because forever it's been she cheated on him and i know because i have so many dancer friends that they were both cheating on each other yeah so what are your thoughts there i mean i i think that she's telling the truth i think she like yeah listen the whole knife escapades was a, I'm still like yeah. reeling from that. I, I unfollowed and then refollowed because I no, just I, have I had to, to keep, unfollow yeah, yeah. because I was like, Britt, I love you so much and I don't know what's going on, Queen, yeah. but this is not the move. Yeah. However, she's still fully intact. Yeah. So maybe she knows more than I do with the knife trick. I don't know. She, well, it was like, I saw that and I was like, she was, uh, everyone was like, whoa. I mean, the clank and then the dogs run away. Everyone was like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? And then she's like, they're fake. It's like, girl, we know they're not fake. Come on now. Like, she clanked them. She clanked them. It's like it was you could have done the fake thing if if you could if you, you know you didn't clank, but that sound you cannot fake, my girl. Like <laughs> come on now. She's like I had my team go to a prop house. I know. I'm like, I know. Brittany, girl, you're fucking lying, mama. What are you, mama? Come on. <laughs> These lies are toxic, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, look, I feel like if they were 19, 20, of course they were cheating on each other. Yes, of course. They were superstars. Yeah, and Getting young. anything they wanted, yes. having anything they wanted, good for you. Yes. Like, whatever. Do I think she got pregnant? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Do I think he said, don't have the baby? I fucking do. Same. Yeah, I literally, and that's the one thing that I will say, um, like, because she acts crazy, mm -hmm. It's very easy to dismiss her. Sure. And I think a lot of people have been able to benefit off of that. Yes. But I I 
think that going through all the crazy, I think she's still telling the truth. I do I too. think she's a horrible way of saying it. I do too. But I think Justin's a little bitch. And I was never an, a Justin Timberlake girl. Oh, that's so funny. We've been talking about this also a lot well, with the talks of their possible reunion coming up. Yeah. Because I was a Justin girl. But now looking back, no, I'm like... No, you and everybody else. I was a Spice Girls girl because I was finding out soon, early on, later that I was a big lesbian. Oh. So <laughs> I, you would, And then you would think that I would have had a crush on Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. Well, looking back, it's like, oh, JC was the one. Anyway, JC's voice is incredible. Yeah. Like those pipes, he could dance. JC was the one. Also, it's just weird to me. I know Justin's the one that's been keeping us from an NSYNC reunion. I know, but Justin's super problematic. And also, a lot of shit's coming out about Justin. Remember when the whole situation went down at the Super Bowl with Janet Jackson? I do. And then it later came out not too long ago that like he was good with it and then he like um he never took any slack for it he never lost his career janet right. like totally did oh yeah and then he never stood up for her he's already gotten into trouble like two years ago with all of this coming back oh i know that's why i was so worried for him with this coming out and he must be fucking shaking in his boots you know to have yeah. these, and the full thing hasn't even come out and we already have these two humongous bombshells but i think he's counting on the fact that he can be like she's crazy the yeah. same way that kevin Federline is yeah but you know what justin i hope she attacks and i hope she bites <laughs> And I'm going to stand right next to her while you while she does it. Yeah, I'm not going to be t Team Justin Timberlake. No, I I can't either. And look, I because I do the Janet stuff. It's like Britney aside, that's like breakup that gets messy. But the Janet stuff, like he fully threw her under the bus. Fully threw her under the bus. Yeah, and she was like, and still very much is a queen, mm -hmm. and still handled it with so much respect that she never threw him back under the exactly. bus. Exactly. Still hasn't to this day. Exactly. But honestly, I who I'm wondering how she's doing is Jessica. Me too. Like, girl, come get your man. I know. Leave him. I she's know. She's so fine. She could do anything she she's wanted. She's stunning. My mom and I were talking about that. I'm and her body. Like, goodbye. She, listen, we made a big deal about like J Lo and everybody, but she was, do you remember when that photo came out of her at the volleyball yes. net? Yes. And she was like serving. Yes. Literally serving. She was serving. Like, quite literally serving. She was serving, serving the volleyball. And serving. Yes. And it was like, Sexy, sporty yes. body. Yes, yeah. sexy, she was athletic, a game changer. and she had a great butt too. It, yeah, it was like popped out, a nice little booty, totally. and still does. Like yes. she still oh, looks phenomenal. She still can fully get it. Yeah, um, you know what? I wish that Jessica and Brittany would get together. Oh my god! And then leave Justin out. That would be so. Like yes, Jessica and Brittany like living together in Calabasas or something. Yes, and getting their kids on the weekends and just living their best life and yeah. like doing fitness and maybe Jessica could take the knives away and it'd be so great you know yes someone she, get those knives what's funny is she dropped another knife video and she was like guys this one's fake these are fake no, don't she worry didn't. I, no, I unfollowed her I had to unfollow her so it's so funny because I unfollowed her and then we were talking about it at a party and you I was like her. I have to follow her again and everyone was like you unfollowed her like I'm very I go back and forth because I love her so much and you having lived in Vegas did you ever see her show there I never saw her show because I I lived in LA. Oh, when she okay. The whole time that she was here. Sure, sure, sure. But her backup dancer, who was my best friend for years. Which one? TJ Espinoza. Uh, we we. I mean, do you know TJ? I don't know TJ, but like we know the same people. We no, we just TJ's a legend. TJ's like, a old legend. School okay. backup, like in all the original videos. Yes, yes, we know of TJ okay, on so this pod. I got very lucky because mm -hmm. when I moved to LA, I moved at sixteen. Mm -hmm. I was still finding my footing. When I turned eighteen, uh -huh. I met TJ, and TJ like scooped me up under his wing. And truly, I will always say TJ is the reason that I was like. I could like sustain in LA. Yeah. He was so good to me. Yeah. He was uh, just so fun and he was so great. But he's always had Britney's back. Yeah. And he's always said she's been really wonderful. And uh, if he says that she's the best, then I think she's the best. I think she's the best too. I just think she's had 
a really fucking hard life. Like, you know, having been on just a, a TV show, American Idol, and getting a little taste of that at such a young yeah, age. Yeah, listen, I mean, you have to remember, we weren't dealing with, like, one Me Too culture. Right. You weren't dealing with, there were literal tabloids that were like, who looks fat today? Yeah, exactly. And I think we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. But that's how she, that was, like, how she got brought up. Yes. In that era of, like, you could say whatever you wanted. Do you remember Howard Stern once... Um, um, cause I put up a clip from last week of me and my guest Caroline Goldfarb talking about Travis Kelsey cause of all the Taylor Swift stuff. And yeah. we don't know football very well, but we're yeah. talking about it. And dudes came hard. Dudes were triggered by us trying to talk about football. And my friend, Why? well, my friend was like, he's so hot. I bet he has a coke camp penis. And these dudes were like, Imagine if guys had a podcast where they talked about women's bodies. I'm like, have you heard? You do, ha you morons. Have you heard Howard Stern? Like, he literally weighed Nicole Richie on an episode of his show when she was going through all her eating disorder stuff in the early yeah. 2000s. Like, what? And they love Howard Stern. Exactly. He literally made a book about fucking, like, sex. There were so many titties I and know. shit in that book. I know. It's so crazy. But yes, I cannot imagine because even as a girl who wasn't in the spotlight at all, you felt that pressure, you know, just seeing the yeah. magazines of yeah. like oh I have to look this way or I'll get called fat or people will make fun of me I cannot imagine trying to like every move she did was and made was like scrutinized so highly yeah it really was and when they broke up they really again blamed it all on her yes and people kind of turned on her because of that That's, there was a big like pop culture split absolutely and I'm again I'm so glad that this is all coming to light because a lot of people are like uh, I think the people who are def kind of defending Justin, I did read that one source close to him and Jessica said they are hoping that people will start to leave things in the past. But it's like she got fucked in the past and she deserves to finally have her voice back and tell her side of the story because he did a video, Cry Me a River, where the girl looked exactly like... It was like Britney. It was Britney. And he clearly implied that she cheated on him. And yes, it caused all this drama and speculation. And she was classy she never said anything she took it and she got fucked and he his career continued to, to build so I really am glad that she's coming out because I've known for years everyone was like she cheated on him because he cheated on her like I've had you heard that before no I didn't I didn't I thought it was just Wade Robson so she yeah apparently everyone was like yeah they cheated on each other like they made it seem like she was the bad one and he totally it's it it's like he just had this. And I think everyone has that. But also, didn't you see, speaking of cheating, didn't yeah. you see the tabloids that came out like a year or two ago with him on the balcony? Oh, yeah. And he was like all mm -hmm. over his co-star, mm -hmm. drunk. He looked crazy. Someone got a video. They where were holding hands. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that just like got dismissed. Yes, that was for that movie. I think it was called Palmer. Yeah, uh-huh. I saw it. It was actually a good movie. He was really good in it. But yes, exactly. Well, he's a good actor. He's a good singer. He still can be yeah. a shitty dude. Exactly. We can separate, you know, someone's art artistic presence from their personal presence, you yeah. know? But again, I'm just so glad because she just took all this shit, like just, you know, sitting down. And now I'm happy that she has a chance to have her voice, you know? Yeah, same. Yeah. Same. And I love her. And I don't care. Listen, she can be crazy as she wants to be now. She was and will always be a legend. Legend. She was Britney effing Spears, yes. honey. Yes, she was. A game changer. Game changer, full. And also, people are always like, she can't sing. Yeah, yeah she can. Yeah. If you guys listen to videos from vi like back Way in the back. day, mm -hmm. even like Star Search days, yeah. she was like... <clears throat> Belting. She was giving. Pipes. She had some pipes. Yeah. Um, so speaking of that singers, as a professional singer, you have an incredible voice. I'm like your Thank fangirl. You. Every singing video you post, I'm like, because I... It's like singers and dancers. And dancing, I'm better at than singing. singing. No, you're so good at dancing. Thank you so much. You're so, we're not even going to do okay, that. You're okay, okay, an okay. amazing dancer. I'll take that. But singing, I have, I have a really bad voice. Like any of my fans who love me will tell you. I have a horrible voice. I love doing karaoke because I like to commit, but my pipes, they're not good, you know? So I so, like, I'm obsessed with people who have good voices. So I want to know who inspires you, who do you think are some of the best voices we have currently, pop stars, and then maybe some from the past as well. Mm, somebody I'm super obsessed with right now is Teddy Swims. Ooh. I just cannot get enough of that bitch he's so incredible have you heard no teddy swims no okay he's 
the bomb girl. Yes. He's super raspy. Okay. Super like, I, I feel like I'm really excited about artists like Jelly Roll. Oh, my friend was just on tour with Jelly Roll. Stop. I went to see him the Stop. day after. I'm obsessed I, with Jelly Roll. Bitch, I went to see him the day after and it was your like podcast. Church. It was like church and I got to go backstage. I got to meet Jelly Roll. Oh, he's the it. nicest. I got free merch from 3-6 Mafia. Like, <gasps> he's the nicest human being. And Bunny's the best, his wife. I didn't get to meet Bunny. She wasn't there. Okay. Because her father, I think, is having some health oh, issues that's right, so, that's so I right. wasn't able to meet her I did see her amazing pink tour bus and oh, took yeah. a picture uh -huh. with it um, but he, just such good people my friend had the most amazing time he's a comic so he kind of emceed the whole show which was really cool for him that's so cool yeah he does comedy and music Who, what his name's Josh Adam Myers okay he's a comic and he did this show called the goddamn comedy jam where comedians tell a story about a song and then they sing the song with a live band. Oh my God, band. this is amazing. It's incredible. If you're ever in town for one, you have to come. Please. Uh, if I ever do it, I want you to come Please. sing with me. Oh my God, I will. Um, If I do it again, I mean, I do it a lot considering how bad my voice is, but he's like banned me from singing anything except like <laughs> Limp Bizkit, basically. <laughs> but it's a really great song and a uh, show and he, it was on Comedy Central for like a year and now it does all the festivals. Jelly saw him at a festival and was like, I want you to host Stop. my show with your band. So so yeah, he's totally like bar mitzvah DJing Jelly Roll show. Basically. I love it. Yeah. I love it. But I agree. I think Jelly Roll is so good, so powerful. He has such yeah. a good story. Like, mm -hmm. and he's just kind of like, I'm just this fucked up dude trying to like do right. Yeah. You know? I mean, I love it. I sort of love where we are generationally with music because I feel like, listen, I'm such a pop and hip hop girl, like mm -hmm. forever. And I love it. But I have always loved. I actually did a show called Gone Country with Chris Kirkpatrick. Oh, what? Speaking of insane. Barry, the lead. Uh -huh. show. <laughs> we did this show called Gone Country in Nashville. Uh -huh. And I really fell in love with. I'd always loved Southern rock. Yeah. And I really fell in love with country. And for a minute, I really wanted to make like a country album. Yeah. Um, and they were like, you're an Italian Jew. Get out. And I was <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> and now, like, 20 years later, we're seeing, like, these amazing sort yeah. of southern rock gospel blues artists yep. like Jelly Roll. Teddy Swims, I don't know what category. He's not a Nashville boy, but he's incredible. I'm so happy to see this, like, lane of rock country. I'm just about it. I love it. I'm the biggest Janis Joplin fan. Oh, yeah. And Amy Winehouse. If you could marry the two, I would hope that's what my sound could be similar yes. to. And I just, I love to see like these artists right now that are sort of emulating them. It's just raspy. It's raw. It's yeah. dirty. Yeah. Brandi Carlisle, I love. Oh, yeah. She's Bishop great. Bishop Briggs, I love. I love Bishop. Obsessed. I Isn't am, she so great? She's so good. I found her through dance because um, she, a uh, choreographer named Galen Hooks put up this incredible choreography um, years ago, probably like five or six years ago uh, to her song River. River is my favorite. Yeah. And it went super viral. I'll send you the choreography is incredible, but that's on my playlist. I'm obsessed with um, Bishop. My friend does her makeup, actually. Oh, my God. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So Bishop's great. If you guys don't listen, definitely recommend Bishop Briggs. Yeah. Have you heard of Meg Myers by chance? She's someone that I discovered recently from Spotify thinking that I am a teen Gen Z girl who's just like Spotify. You are a teen Gen Z girl. Thank you so much. But Spotify recommends like the most emo female pop to me. I'm like, oh, well, good. I love it. I love it. I don't know what mood I'm putting out. It's like Billy, I like lesser known Billy Eilish vibes. Oh, I love, and stuff. I love Billy yeah, Eilish. Yeah, but um, Meg Myers. I think if you like Bishop Briggs, you might like Meg Myers. Yeah. I'll send you some tunes. Please, I would love it. Um, now another thing I always ask on this show is what What's the biggest thing that you fangirl over? We just kind of talk about music, but like even throughout your life, like for me, Titanic, Scream, those are like kind of my go-to. I'm such a fangirl for them. Obviously, I have tattoos. But is there something, a movie, an actor, or anything? Someone once said lighting, they fangirled over. What does that mean? Daniel Francesi was like, oh I really God, love you. He's like, I'm going to say lighting. I was like, bitch, I love you. Get the fuck out. I love you. Get the 
fuck <laughs> out. Only Daniel from But you know what? Lighting is very important. Lighting can make you look 78,000 years old like the fucking Titanic. I totally or agree. Or it can make you look like Kate Winslet 24. I totally agree. 100%. So you know what? Danny F, you got it. You got it. So anything, it can be anything. I mean, I don't know. Like, I literally have a Robert De Niro shirt on right now. Yes. And I'm obsessed with Casino. I've uh, seen it a billion, thousand, million times. I love Casino. I love Goodfellas. I could watch a million times. Yes. My cousin Vinny. Like, I love. Yes. Those types of movies. I love Robert De Niro. I feel like if I fangirled over anything, it would definitely be like that era, that yes. genre. Yes. Just because it makes me feel like, okay, bitch, now I'm going in, not to like shoot up a place, just yeah. like, <laughs> not to start in that way, okay, but just like, You're like it's so inspiring. Like, how much do you love Casino and Goodfellas? <laughs> well, like, sometimes I write prisoners just to say hello. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I feel like that type of Italian just reminds me so much of my papa. Yes. And growing up, and my papa yes. was my favorite person. Aww. And um, I, I feel like it's just very nostalgic for me. But yes. I do. I feel like. I fangirl over that for sure. I love it. I love it so much. Bobby. And that shirt is so dope. Bobby, you. you gotta love Bobby. Look how you know? handsome he is. He's hot. He really, like, look how hot he was. He was People so hot. People usually have, like, Snoop Dogg on their shirts. They're like, what's up? I'm like, this is Robbie. Yeah, Robbie. I love it. Love he, you, Rob. Hot, hot. Are you going to see, wait, he's in the new Scorsese movie, right? With Leo? I think he is. Yeah, yeah. with uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. I'll be seeing it immediately. I'm seeing, I'm so excited. Yeah. Obvious it's Leo. We needed a new Martin Scorsese movie. Yeah, we did. But he kills it, too. I love him. Oh, yeah. I mean, my f Wolf of Wall Street, like, goodbye. Insane. One, one of my favorite movies of all time. I just love it. Yeah, then he and Leo together are just like they are. magic. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Um, all right. And then you're getting married. You're engaged, <gasps> as we mentioned, yes. to the beautiful Lisa. I know. Do you have any wedding plans or anything? Or do you have any sort of vision of like how you want your wedding to be? No, I mean, we've talked about it so much. I'm Italian, uh, she's Armenian. Mm -hmm. So it would be like it's either like a lot. Yeah. Or like not. Yeah. And I don't want a lot. Yeah. I want very simple. I love Lisa. I feel like she's a DJ. She's yeah. in it. I'm a singer. I'm in it. Yeah. I really, and I've asked her multiple times, I really want to do the Vegas drive through wedding. Yes. I think it'd be so cute. We could theme it out. Yes. Call it a day. And then have like a big Italian themed party. Yes. And move on. Yes. I, that's how I'd like to do it. I don't want to do... Big wedding stuff. I'm just not into it. It's funny because I don't know if it's, I don't know if you're the same way. Since I've gotten older, like when it, I was mm -hmm. younger, I'm like, it's going to be all out and all this yeah. stuff. But I'm like, that just sounds stressful at yeah. this point. That's what it is. We yes. were kind of looking into it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, first of all, it's $5 million yeah. to get a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't even eat fucking cake. I've got three ulcers. I'm gluten free. Yeah. Who's eating the cake? Yes. Not me. Yes. So I said, I don't want to do it like that. I'm, yeah. I don't want to spend money. I don't. I. I don't want to be stressed, like yes. you said, on what's supposed to be the happiest day of your life. Yeah. I mean, I hear horror stories of like, oh, the bride and groom. Oh, we didn't get to eat the whole wedding. It's like if I'm paying this much for everyone to have dinner, I'm. Don't talk to me till I've eaten. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. But half the time they don't even make it around to all the guests that they I invited. Know. And that's how it is, like in our cultures, even in like on my father's side, like. It's always just big and you have, you're expected to invite everybody. But I don't play by any of those rules. Yeah. I don't want to do any of that. Yeah. Well, so we'll get married when we get married. Maybe it'll be another 10 years. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm with my boyfriend. We, My boyfriend and I have been together for 10 years. Everyone's like, when are you getting engaged? I'm like, but we, we live together. It's not, we're together. Like, it's yeah. not going to change anything. Yeah. So we're not really in a rush, you know? Yeah. Like, we know what the commitment is, so. Totally. That's how I feel. Nothing changed. When yeah. she put the ring on my finger, I was like, great. Yeah. Want to have breakfast? Yeah. Like, it's like, <laughs> nothing changes. It is a good ring, though. It's a beautiful it's ring. A really and I love it. Ring. And you know, I will say I do feel very proud walking around being like it is a sense of like this is my girl like yeah. I'm hers but it does the loyalty the commitment yeah it all stays the same absolutely and how long have you guys been together it'll be nine years wow yeah. that's so cute you guys are such a hot couple like thank I'm you obsessed so much with you. she literally is the bread and butter to the entire relationship oh she's the stable one yeah she's the one that's like the calm to the storm she's that, she's the bomb like she, i yeah. am insane and she is 
everything that's how it is with me and mitch i feel like that's why and mitch actually was a dj when i first started dating him mitch. yeah i know he's he's moved into animation now but um but yeah it's so funny you need one of those calm people like i look at i've had comedian friends who have dated each other and i've tried to date comedians or comedic actors and it's just i need the other person to be calm yeah i'm sorry i'm the star you know what i mean uh, like yeah, okay can we just say <laughs> it like hello um and i'm the crazy one we can't <laughs> both be fucking nuts you know we can't both be a-list celebrities exactly and we can't both be ordering skims left and right <laughs> Until the cows come home. God, I love those fucking skits. I though. know, right? I it's love so your fun. skits. Thank you so much. I love them. Thank you. Yeah. I love you so much. I love um, you. Yeah, I do. I feel like it's good. I try to date people like me or musicians, hate them all. I would never date somebody like me yeah. as me. I would never do it. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of myself. Yeah. I would never do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lisa's, I mean, Lisa, and Lisa's like a star. She's the actual real star. Yeah. You know, I'm just like the one that's like, do you guys want to some of this? I and mean, then she's like if, silent. Yeah. Killing it. And that, everyone's like, who's that bitch? And that, I'm like, that's literally exactly how it is with Mitch. Like I was with my friends the other night who are like, uh, you know, my friend Allison and, and my friend Brittany and Allison was just like, I was talking about Mitch. They were both like, how's Mitch? And I'm just like, and they're both like dancers, like performers like me. And everyone just loves Mitch because he has... I don't know if this is the same with Lisa, this like calm, cool energy that's like not trying to be the totally. center of attention that's like so attractive to people. Yeah, you yeah know? they're not tryhards. Yeah, they're not tryhards. Not like me. I'm like, pick me. A anything. <laughs> I'm like, I'll do anything. You want a fucking cartwheel? What do you want? <laughs> I'll do anything. <laughs> Wait, so tell me a little bit more about your sleeve before we wrap up because a sleeve is something that like, I'm like, fuck, I wish I was badass enough to have a full sleeve. You are badass to have a sleeve. Do you think? Fuck yeah. You look, I just think it looks so cool. And I you love do? that you're so like feminine and petite and hot. And you just have this badass sleeve. Like it's Thank such you. a cool juxtaposition. Well, you know what? I actually love and appreciate you so much for saying that. I was having this conversation with my tattoo artist who Ruby at High Art Tattoo is the best. She's a, it's women owned. Oh, I love that. And she's incredible. Um, but I feel like if you've been in LA for a long, enough time and it, it really does sound so LA and I don't want it to but you know 20 years ago yeah 10 years ago maybe even up into the pandemic you couldn't have tattoos you had to have one right. hair color mm -hmm. you couldn't paint your nails yep. it was like they wanted one look yes for acting and um I always really really hated that Me and too. I I was like but I'm a singer and I'm an artist and I want to yeah. just do what I want to do and right. I think tattoos are beautiful and so I really kind of made the commitment last year. I had two small tattoos right here and they were old and they were like old school tattoos. Mm -hmm. And my tattoo artist Ruby said, listen, we're either going to have to just laser them off or cover them up. Okay. Like it's the time yeah. is now. You look like an asshole. And I was <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, what were Fair. they? What were they? They were like old school traditional tattoos. One was like a diamond with a heart. Oh my Another God. one was said namaste, but the birds were upside down. <laughs> and it was like a fucked up tattoo. It wasn't even cool. It was so stupid. I presented it wrong. And the two doves were just upside down. They look stupid. I'm like, an idiot. Oh my God. And so I said, okay, well, let's do it so when she started doing the cover up here mm -hmm. it really did become like a very noticeable larger tattoo right and i said you know what i'm just fuck it like i if you don't want to hire me then don't yeah. like i'm doing my own thing right like, that's what i want to do i've always wanted to have a sleeve i think tattoos are really beautiful they're really meaningful yeah to me they're really special i think as long as as you get them like the most important tattoo i have is um is my grandma vivian who passed away Aww. and then i have lisa's name and then i have sky who um is the woman that has become my mother Aww. and it's like the three most important women in my life yeah and i just like it i like for people to see it i right. like for the tattoos to be exposed and so i just really said like i, I don't care i'm over it i, I want to have a full sleeve and tattoos and do whatever i want and it felt so exhilarating and i i feel like myself like yeah. i feel like this is who I always wanted to be. Yeah, I totally agree. Because um, I started with like little ones because like you said, back in the day, it'd be like, they won't hire you for acting if you and have tattoos. And they were strict. They were strict. I mean, I remember years ago reading that Christina Ricci, who's 
was already a legend at the time was like, yeah, I can't get too many tattoos because makeup, they don't want to pay for makeup to have to cover. Right. Um, Cause it takes so much longer. And so I was like this scared little, like, you know, trying to please, Oh, if I, maybe if I just don't get tattoos. And then finally when I was 29, I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to get some tattoos. And I've just never stopped. But this one especially is kind of but the, I like, love it. I love it too. And it's a good conversation starter, totally. you know, like I love them. So I'm glad uh, that we're in a place where like, characters can have tattoos in TV well, shows. And I think, listen, life is really scary right now. Yeah. And life is really difficult for some people. And, you know, mental health really is a big conversation. Yeah. And we don't know, you know, what day to the next we're going to get. And yeah. I feel like while I'm still here, I really made it a point. You know, I'll be 36 in January. Mm -hmm. And I just really made a commitment to myself. Like, I'm no longer going to do things I don't want to do. Totally. And I'm absolutely going to go 100% in the things that I do want to do. And even if I mess up or get it wrong or it doesn't work or whatever, like, yeah. I just want to be, like, happy and live fully with what I've got left. I love that so much. And before we wrap up, I did want to talk a little bit about your podcast, which I think is so special you, and Mama. so fun and also just so important. You have comedians on to talk about what makes them funny because a lot of it does come from tragedy and trauma and I just think it's so special that you talk about mental health in such a fun and open way and not like oh you make it fun but you kind of do you know and you make it like relatable so what inspired you to start the podcast well first of all I love you so much Justine I swear to god I do and you were such an amazing episode thank and you. thank you for that because um you just made it so fun but so vulnerable talking about your eating disorder I got quite a few few dms actually oh, thank you. that really appreciated that conversation um i mean look i'm fucked up yeah hello hello it's like it's why i'm a singer it's why i'm a comedian right i just felt like i was in a really dark place mm -hmm. and usually when i'm in my darkest places the best thing i can do is make a joke like yeah. i need the laughter like totally. i need it to Same. be not as yes. serious mm -hmm. and so i figured you know uh, uh when i created the podcast i had just like lost my job at the um this morning radio show national morning radio show i was at oh right it was really difficult i was moving back home i felt like i was in a really low place yeah and I was like, fuck, dude, what's the next move? Right. And I just remember someone saying, oh, you're so funny. And I saw this meme that said, thanks, it's the trauma. And I was like, it's true. Like, who's funny because of trauma? Like, right. fucked up people are right. the funny ones. Right. And the clever ones. Yes. And I thought, like, I just admire so many comedians. And I would love to know what makes them tick like yeah. what's the trauma that and some people are like i don't really have any trauma like yeah. i'm just funny and then i'm like get the fuck out yeah get you out you're, that's you're lying or and you should be embarrassed yeah exactly that you such a nice life yeah exactly get <laughs> out of here <laughs> i know i do always relate to people with a little more trauma like i need a little edge yeah yeah and you know people have it and i, I feel like it humanizes us yes. as well i feel like comedians oftentimes are the clowns of the show yes. oftentimes i've walked into rooms and felt like I had to be the entertainment, even if I was having a really difficult time. Like when my grandma died, my family, I, I walked into my family's house and they're like, okay, Michaela, do something funny. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to like, I'm, my grandma just died. Right, like, right, I don't right, want right, to be funny. Yeah, guy I don't want right to be now. on right now. You know, and mm -hmm. I like, that was the first time I really said that. But right. I feel like that's like that with a lot of comedians. Sometimes you just don't want to fucking be on. Absolutely. I think it's totally like... I, I've heard of people meeting big comedians. They're like, oh, they weren't super, they weren't how I expected. And it's like, but we're not clowns all the time. It is kind of a character we play. And we have real feelings too, you yeah. know? Um, so I just think it's so great that you have that podcast. Thank and you, if you Mama. guys are not familiar, definitely start listening. Now, uh, we do have to wrap up, but where can everyone find you and follow you? And what do you have coming up? What can you plug? And what's your show in Vegas that you always do? I want to come. Oh my God, come just anytime, please. please. Okay, you can follow me at Michaela Gordon or at So Funny It Hurts, the mm -hmm. podcast. And then I am at Aria on Fridays okay. at Easy's with my band. Amazing. And they're amazing. <gasps> And we love them. Oh, my God. And um, that's where you can follow me. A, a new episode comes out every Wednesday of So Funny It Hurts. I think Katie Kazorla is 
our uh, uh, most recent guest, who amazing. is insane. I love her. She's crazy. She's I amazing. love her. Yeah. And she's probably got a lot of trauma, too, you know? Oh, my God. She had a do. great story. She also hates Kenny G, oh which my God. she'll have to listen to. <laughs> well, also, her husband, like, wrote one of my favorite Mariah Carey oh, songs. Her, Walter's the best. Walter wrote My All, which is, like, my favorite Mariah Carey ballad yeah, of all time. Yeah, he's the best. You know, Katie, we talk about on the podcast, but she was another one. I met her 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and she gifted me with my first... Uh, Christian Louboutins. Oh, yes. and I was like, I love you. Yes, and, um, she's amazing. So you can follow me on Instagram at Michaela Gordon. Great, and then it has all the details of where I'll be next, Mom. Amazing. Well, anytime you're in LA, please, please, please let us know so that we can have you back. You're just fantastic. I feel like you're my. F- I feel like I've known you forever. I feel like that too. Okay, good. I, I love you so. much. I love you so much, and I'm so proud of you. This is the bomb, girl. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait to see what we do next. Thank you, Mom. Well, it won't be eating meatballs. Yeah, no, definitely not. And I'll never do that again. I love you though. It was love so. You. Mitch loved him. Mitch loved the fucking meatballs. You got. Guys, thank you so much for listening and follow Michaela. Check her out. I will talk to you guys later. Glitterati, love you. Bye. Glitterati.